Good day, guys, and welcome to the Center Bounce. Where today we are joined once again by our great friend Dia in our beginner series here for Super Coach. Stay tuned. Jez, we are joined with Dr. the absolute superstar. He was with us for the Brisbane video, but now we're going to do something a little bit more super coach oriented. Thank you so much for coming on, Dr. Thank you very much for having me on again, guys. You know, I say it all the time, but it's an absolute pleasure when I get together with you two and uh, very, very uh, exciting to be talking about what to do when we look to trade in a player because it's obviously a big part of Supercoach and I think the perfect topic for a beginner's guide. Yeah, it's something that we've obviously spoken about off air a lot, Joe, and just kind of getting these, I guess, kind of experts is the right word on the show and just having a bit oh, of a chat about you know, <laughs> what, what makes them good during the season, kind of what topics and whatnot do you guys do. A um, bit of a segue into the super uh, the stock market videos dr i know it's something that we both love jumping on about and talking about and then you know you love making throughout the season those are like 5 a.m uploads when you wake up early before work <laughs> oh, ne never shit. never go astray oh no i appreciate it mate yeah look uh I, I do make a commitment to get them out each week and so at times there are some late nights you know being a teacher but you know you know what it's like fellas you just got to put content out there and uh, if it goes goes on a little bit into the night, then, then that's the way it is. But look, love putting it together. And the best thing about putting these things together, and I think Jaden was mentioning it in his previous video, is that for your own side, it's actually really, really good research. And so mm. it's a, a bit of a family affair for me. So at times I've got the boys reading out names. I'm sitting there, you know, adding to the document. And look, when I first started, it was pretty much, you know, a name price and what the break even is. But I suppose year upon year, I've tried to upgrade it and make it bigger and better as we go along. So we've always got the price there of the player. Well, then we look at the three round average because for beginners, this is really, really important. When we're taking a player's price into consideration and their break even, which we'll get into in a sec, it's based off their three round average. So let's just say it's round 10 in the season. It really doesn't matter what this bloke scored in round four. It's not really counting to what his score is at the moment. Mm. So we've got the break even there. Now the break even is super, super important. So to keep it simple, the break even is the score that the player must achieve to keep their current price. And this may be off by a hundred to $200 at times so we can see there right at the top as an example we've got jack buckley so he's actually got a break even of negative 40. so he can step onto the ground get injured and still make money there but what i also try to include is their projected score what super coach gold thinks they'll score now always take this with a grain of salt this is definitely not a great guide to go with but it is the guide that i use for these videos and the most important thing is here the projected rise how much are these players looking to go up? Because at the end of the day, we want to invest in players that are going up in price. So we look to this one here. Uh oh, we've got some break evens in the absolute red. We look at Travis Boak down there with a three round <laughs> average of 40. His break even is 253. So this poor bloke and a veteran in the store to the game, but his projected loss was 76,800 this round. And I've obviously got the note section there. And uh, mm -hmm. Joey, we may have passed, I'm not sure if we actually started on this, but when it comes to the note section, I did have a very special one last year and it was dedicated to Joe from the centre bounce. We have Will Set a Goat. So you can see there, third from the top, Will Set a Goat. Now this was a nickname from Joey all over this man. I did jump on him, but I didn't have him at the start of the season. All credit goes to this bloke here. But uh, the set of goat, you can see in the notes section there, I've got hold at the top. I've got Mr. Burns for steel side bottom because he's getting a little bit old. But I do have the tick there because he's in good form. But then we come yep. down to the third one. We've got Joey there, big bad Joey, and the centre bounce symbol. That was just a bit of respect to the man. I think he deserves it. So going into 2024, it's going to be very, very interesting to see where that symbol moves to. Is it going mm. to be an Essendon player? Maybe Joey's got a pot in mind that he could switch it to. So keep that, uh, we'll keep a lookout for that in the stockies this year. And Big J, maybe if you're onto a nice pod, mate, we could enter even the Big J 
stock Mate. market symbol as well oh. to join your man Joey there, Big J. Oh, so I'll have uh, to find a I'll have to find a random pick because all the North Melbourne players seem to be in like everyone's teams this year. Oh, oh they're everyone's they're got eight right. North Melbourne players and they're all yeah. going to be premiums <laughs> by the end of the season. So there's no specialties to go. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, that is that is the basis of the stock market videos each week. So basically just some advice on who I think are good trade-ins, who are good trade-outs. Uh, we'll talk about rookies and bubbles and all that as we get into the video, but uh, yeah. it can get a little bit complicated at times. So we're trying to keep it as simple as possible here, obviously with the visual charts. Mm. And I've always found as well for someone who Joe and I will buy Super Coach Gold, but there's always people asking throughout the season, what's break-evens of this, what's break-evens of that, especially for the younger players or the beginners. They're not going to put the investment into actually buying Super Coach Gold. So kind of what you do throughout the week, normally on a Wednesday, um, is just fantastic for them. Uh, much appreciated, mate. Much appreciated. And again, if it wasn't for, for great blokes like you that actually tune into videos, uh, it would be nothing, but uh, yeah, with all the love and support that you get around community, uh, those 3 a.m., 5 a.m. uploads are, are all worth it at the end of the day. Yeah, and another thing that other stats, for example, that might not be so very readily available, obviously we got an absolute legend like Bryce Mitchell, for example. When we're talking yeah. about price changes and when we're talking about, I know, DR, he's obviously these stock market videos are incredible in terms of talking about the three round average that they've had as well as what we're looking to see from them in the coming week but there are some players there are some people like bryce mitchell who i think it would be great if we could put his like his socials in the comment in the description down below because Legend. you could you could tweet him out during the course of the season asking for predictions of prices of what it looks like certain players are going to be price stacked based on their performances and and these sort of things uh, these re these resources and these legends of the game are absolutely invaluable. I know Jaden as well uh, was talking with him off air as well, and he's also looking to do something similar, uh, like a sort of chart in terms of if someone scores X amount, how much they're willing to they're going to rise in a few weeks' time. Oh. Obviously, obviously, it's all predictions, but there's the things that help you build your team and help you plan ahead with the trades that you want to do. Because we've spoken about what it's like to how the scoring works, but now we sort of want to look into what does that actually mean for the prices of these players because you, you need to be able to, to move these players around whether it's to downgrade certain rookies to then upgrade others. That's the big key of the game, mate, and that separates the good coaches from the great coaches. And, and even fellas like Bryce Mitchell, it was, I think it was the end of last year, he was putting out projected prices even for 2024 so people can start to yeah. build their teams or get a rough idea about that. So absolute legends of the community. And it's, uh, look, I know that there can be a little bit of negativity on Twitter slash X at times, but at the same mm. time, there are some terrific resources out there, some terrific people that do an amazing job. And they do all the research for you, just like here at the Centre Bounce. You do all the hard work. Uh, there are some terrific people. So yeah, extremely important to... Uh, get around all the price changes. And you, you did mention predictions. Whether it's a stock market videos, it's price, anyone, you can't predict an injury. You can't predict just someone falling off a cliff for a change in role. Sometimes mm. you're just a little bit unlucky, but you do your best with your own predictions. And, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. But, yeah, a fantastic resource and great people out there, mate. Yeah, And even those people as well. I know we've had a few times when, we think a rookie's doing really well and then they've had a few poor games to start the season and then people have jumped off and then bang, you know, something happens and that little niggle injury that might have been um, hurting them for the first couple of weeks kind of just jumps out and then, you know, back to 100 scoring. I know kind of Rochelle from a few years ago and things like that. As a super coach of DR, how do you kind of work out when you're going to jump off these type of players or what kind of metrics and whatnot do you use for keeping a player, but also, hey, look, I should be really getting this guy into my team. It's interesting. I think a lot of it is the same process as when you're selecting a player in your starting side. So all the things that you look for there, we're talking role, uh, is someone injured in the side, are they filling in? All the things that you look to when you're making your starting team, the difference is, is that when you're looking to trade in or out during the season, prices are fluctuating. With our starting sides, that's not the case. But 
that's the major difference here. And that's why it's so important to take into account all these break evens. But generally, we look at things like bubble boys, for example. So that's when a player's price is about to change. So the general rule is when a player has played their second game, so they've played game one, played game two, the game after that, their price is going to change. And most likely with a cheap rookie being that 117 to 123K, their price is going to rise unless they've had a, a sub-affected game maybe or a terrible game they've came on late and just didn't have much of an impact. So it's really important to get on these blokes that are going to rise in price. And again, when it comes to selecting your, your starting team, same rules apply. Uh, what's their role like? What's their job security like? What team do they play for? A lot of mm. factors go into that. But if we're talking about bubble boys and price, that's the thing we need to look at. Which rookies are going to go up, hopefully rapidly, sooner rather, you know, the better. And maybe which rookies, even if they're on the bubble, do we look to avoid because possibly their job security isn't fantastic. So I suppose it really is a little bit of both there. And when we're looking at someone like more of a premium slot, I love to look at those fallen premiums. So has someone been really unlucky, unlucky with a concussion? For example, we hate seeing this in the game. We hate seeing mm -hmm. this, but they have their concussion game. They miss a week. They play another couple of weeks. That low game's in their price cycle. Then mm -hmm. we can absolutely pounce. So that's another thing that we look to do. And again, it all comes down to strategy. You look at someone like a Marcus Bontempelli. This can be a bloke who can be impossible to trade in. If he keeps his consistency up like he has in the last couple of years, you're not going to get him cheap, most likely under 650K. So these are all things we really need to take into account. With someone like a Bont, even a Dacos maybe, a, a James Sisley is someone that also comes to mind. Timing is absolutely crucial. Mm. So whether or not they've mm. had a bad game, whether or not they're coming up against an opponent who you think that's a really friendly fixture for them. So Dacos, for example, if you're not starting him, he may have a Sydney tag, even though Clark isn't there. They may get someone else to do the job. Maybe a Hawthorne tag has the buy, and then you look to get him in, in, in that circumstance. So there's a lot of things you take in factor. I could sit here all day, boys. You take the buys into yeah. account when selecting players this year. If they come off the buy, they haven't got another buy to come. Beautiful. Let's jump on them. Even the teams with two buys that are playing round zero after their first buy, such as a Sam Walsh, could you look mm -hmm. to bring him into the side? So, so many factors. There is certainly not the one answer when uh, looking yeah. about who to trade in or trade out. And I've always found as well that you talk about planning as much as you can, but making sure you've got enough cash as well. As you say, super coach and AFL is very unpredictable. So many times I've been like, cool. I just need Sam Walsh to not go an 80 this week. Oh, and then no, halfway right. through the game, he goes an 80. Oh, and it's like, Man, yeah. I can't do the trades I wanted to do. So making sure, yeah. I guess, you've got enough money in the bank or a bit of flexibility with some of your players that you can actually do that. Yeah, very, very true. And an interesting conversation, very, very quickly, not to go off track, but I had with Selby Morris Magic. I said to him, how much money, or do you have a rule with how much money you actually leave in the bank? With his starting side and he said look ideally it's nice to have a little bit there for a slight bit of movement but at the end of the day money on the bench with his starting side in in his belief in a way is money mm. wasted so i know other people have a different opinion maybe 100k is ideal because you can look to upgrade a mid price or you know, a high mid price like an amon type to someone more like a walsh type if you need to so yeah very interesting ways about thinking about how much money in the bank is good but during the season, you're right, Big J. How many times have you screenshotted something and posted on X like I'm 200 bucks short and you're just yeah. pulling your hair out and you go back to thinking, back to Jaden's stats, oh, that was just that little tap to a teammate that he got the bastard. Jeez, how did he get yeah. near it? You know? So, uh, yeah, that, that was why I love seeing Jaden as well. But, uh, yeah, not to get off track, but, uh, yeah, just a, another little tidbit as well there, fellas. Yeah. Because Supercoach is different on a Jaden, um, and obviously, of course, Selby from Mariah is Magic. Coming from a fantasy background before making the move to Supercoach, Supercoach, I think, yes, it's got the limitation on the number of trades you can do compared to fantasy, but something that Supercoach has that I think is really forgiving for people who haven't got the best starting team is the fact that it takes three games. 
for the price to change. Very, and I yeah. think it's very normal, I think, in a lot of instances where in the very beginning of the season, you might have picked the wrong rookies. Rookies that might have bad roles. Yes, they're playing in round one, but they might be playing stuck on a wing that aren't being used or they're being played as a small forward, which isn't a very rewarding role, especially if they're playing for a not a great team. Then all of a sudden you're sort of in a position where you really need to move them out. You missed out on someone. I know, for example... I'm in the one season, I picked the wrong bomber rookie. Rather than starting with Nick Martin, I started with Kane Baldwin. So I missed out on the guy who was getting the ball higher up the ground, who ended up kicking five goals on debut and had 20 odd disposals. And I was stuck with a key forward who barely got a lick of it. So you're going to have to use some, I suppose, some correction trades. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not one that's looking to advocate sort of um, having pre-planned trades in the beginning because you never know what's going to happen at the start being able to select someone and i think nailing those key important rookies at the start before they get on their bubble is really important because that's where a lot of money can be made really quickly and with 40 trades this year there's going to be a lot of aggressive upgrading you're going to want to get your team in order as quickly as possible um so even if that means using a, an early boost here and there to make sure that you've got that cash generation because if you don't have cash gen i know i like i'm gonna quote our good friend the super coach godfather uh abs from abs magic absolute superstar yeah. if you got no money you got no honey so you need to have the money in order to get the honey so that's all in the cash gen before these bright before these players go up in price that's right and they say at the end of the day that the rookies really dictate your structure because if you don't have a couple of, like Cade Chandler was one example for me last year that I never jumped on. And yeah. on reflection, geez, it hurt me a lot. Uh, you go back to talking about using early boosts. I still had a boost in the bank. So that's a big change for me this year. That's embarrassing as well. Let me say that. That is embarrassing. Um, but that's one thing this year. I'm getting really aggressive and I'm getting aggressive early and that's one yeah. thing that lots of fantasy players say that they don't like about super coach is the fact that if you do maybe stuff up your starting team a little bit you don't get punished as hard because you do have a couple of weeks before those prices change you've got the boosts so in the first couple of weeks you can really fix up your team in most circumstances and get some of those must-have rookies but I suppose in saying that, if you start with a lot of these must-have rookies, you don't need to use that boost necessarily Correct. in that first couple of weeks. You could use that aggressively for a buy to get to someone like a Bonson Pally. And, and again, this is the best thing about Supercoach this year, all the different strategies, because this is a beginner series. And let's be honest, with 40 trades, we've never played this type of Supercoach game before. So in a way... Whether or not we've been playing super coach for 15, 20 years, five years, or just jumped on last year, we are all rookies going into the 2024 season Correct. because they're rules that we've never seen before. And 40 trades, four doesn't seem like many to some, but I think it can really change the way that we approach the game this year. Yeah, you're definitely going to find some people who are aggressive, like you say. You're going to find people who are going to try and save some trades for later on. More trades have just kind of, going a little bit off topic, just kind of uh, allow a lot more options to happen, which I think is always good for the game. It's not just like, cool, at this point in time, you should be doing this. At this point in time, you should be doing this, that kind of thing. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, how early will you start tracking a player as someone you want to bring into your side? But then also, how well and how much do you stick to that in case like another player comes out of nowhere and you're like, I must have this guy this week and I haven't planned for him. Yeah, I think this is part of the experience of playing the game. You can't get locked in to a particular player. In saying that, I think that gut feels really important and I think last minute decisions can really, really hurt you. So if you've been tracking a player for a little while and you like the role, you like their output, there's some upside to the pick and all of a sudden out of the clouds, someone comes out with maybe the one good game, then I would go mm -hmm. stick with your gut, stick with the guy that you have been tracking. In regards to how long do you track them for? Well, really with a lot of players, as soon as they play their first game, this is a rookie, if we're talking about a rookie, then I really start to take note then. With other rookies, um, particularly during the preseason, I do a lot of research then. So what were their junior numbers like? And I'll every now and then, look at DFS and see how they're performing in the VFL. The 
trouble with the VFL is the fact that maybe the role that they're playing in the VFL will be different to the role mm. they're playing in the AFL. They may be getting midfield time there, even inside midfield, while they do on the AFL team, maybe a pressure forward, for example. So there's a lot to take into account. But, yeah, with the rookies, I try to look at their VFL form or their reserves form. But when they do get into the side, uh, into the AFL side, that's when I take a really, really decent look. And the rookie review videos that people put out are extremely handy. So always check out that type of stuff. But, uh, yeah, th there's been other players like premiums. If you look at your LDU types, we could say we've been tracking him for years and years and years, it seems like. And this could be the year where he finally breaks out with all the data that we've got. We know the pros. We know the cons. And this is the beauty about tracking players for a long time when they – come to their peak and when they become premiums is we've got a great idea about previous history, previous data and all the pros and cons to those picks. So my advice is if you can track every player, to be quite honest, you don't need to go as hard as on others as some. We talked about the Brisbane Lions players, rookies in the other video that we did uh, before. You really don't need to track those types, but more is magic season guide. They'll have every relevant player there, every player on a list. So that's the sort of stuff that you want. Look into them and maybe use that as a tracking guide and maybe add to that, add to your notes that you've got off a guide or, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I just because the time oh no, go for it, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. And just and just because someone comes off out of the blue really well, like Big J sort of mentioned in that question, doesn't necessarily mean you really need to get onto them. Don't have that FOMO. Don't have that fear of missing out, especially if they have one great game, and, it, and it's doubly especially so if they're not on the bubble yet. Uh, you might think, oh, Absolutely. this is this is amazing, this is wonderful, he's got a great role, um, and I reckon that he can continue this. It's one of the one of the riskiest things you can do in Super Coach is jumping on a player when they're not on the bubble. They've played one great game, and you think this is amazing, and you trade them in. You could be stuck with a player who's only played two games and doesn't actually get to make any money moving forward. Uh, I was stuck with Blake Drury. I did that uh, last year. You know, I, I was hoping that he would he would be that guy, but North yeah. Melbourne once again finds a way to let me down, even though I don't barrack for him. Sorry, <laughs> BJ, but like I was stuck with Blake Drury on the bench, hoping that, oh, look at this 102K rookie. He did yeah. well. You know what? I'm going to take the punt, and I got punted. So don't, <laughs> don't be that guy. Don't. <laughs> it's very risky going early on a rookie. That is a I great guess, point, mate. Great, I great guess, point. I guess in the same in the same aspect as well, right? If don't be afraid of your premium potentially dropping in cash. Like if, if you've got Nick Dacos or someone like that, they are kind of being like, "Cool, I've made my team. I'm happy with the players. It's around five or six. Trying to work out can I downgrade this guy, upgrade someone else? You know, my player looks like he's going to drop eighty k because of a poor score in his round three round three average." Are you an advocate of kind of doing that or are you like, hey, stick with who you've got and put the cash in somewhere else? I, I generally back my premiums, generally. But, you know, again, with the 40 trades, is this a mm. year where you don't put up with that type of nonsense? You know, in the past with Isaac Heaney, for example, you know, one week you celebrate and then for the next three you're pulling your hair out going, what on earth is this fella – in my side in previous seasons I've, I've just kept on to that handy type pick but if you look at those four extra trades if you plan maybe one or two and again plans can go completely out the window but you may be planning on maybe using the strategy of being able to move on an underperforming premium that you may not have been able to move on in the past so to answer that in the past probably not i normally stick with that because trades are gold and then you don't want to be at yeah. the end of the season and you know, rather than having an unperforming premium that you've changed to a decent premium, you could have a premium that is injured for the rest of the season and you're looking at donuts. Yeah. So I'd rather save that trade. Um, but this year could be a little bit different, a little bit different, Big J. Even last year, I probably should have traded out Sam Doherty. Like Doherty had not the best start to the season. He was a premium that I that I held on to and was seen like he's getting the ball, he's getting the pill you know, hoping that maybe he can be cleaner with the ball and, and, and not be a dud. But, you know, having Sam Doherty instead of a stew, instead of any, any other premium that I didn't have in the back line that was popping off, you know, in, in trying to avoid using that trade and, and hoping that he comes around and eventually he gets injured, 
and then I was forced to trade. Like you don't recognize a loss. I mean, ultimately you, you, you select them as premiums to be keepers and to be your best scorers for the year. And just because they have one bad game doesn't mean you necessarily jump off them because yeah, they might lose money, but ultimately that, that that loss in dollars isn't felt unless you sell them. I don't know. It's very much like a stock right. market as DR does. You know, you you bought high. There's no point selling low because then you actually realize the loss. You might as well, you know, in, in previous years, just committed to this player and hope that they would turn it around. But with the 40 trades, it's a whole new game. Um, and it, it might be, a pro, it might be actually better to be proactive this year, especially if you notice that there is a slight role change. Maybe someone else has come into that backline mix, for example, and, and eating into their scoring. Don't mm. fall in love with your players, as as DR said. Don't don't be attached to one person. You have to be agile, uh, and you need to be, and you have to make some brutal calls. Really, that's right. You can't have everyone. You can't get too greedy. <laughs> exactly, hundred um, percent. And I don't know. I haven't really played super coach for too many years myself seriously so i know the year before when i did quite well and finished just outside the top 100 i was really quick to to trade players to trade a premium out even though it was the general consensus that you hold on to your premiums uh but i think it also depends on your team uh if you've had to yeah. burn a lot of trades for example trying to correct some rookies or you've been really unlucky with with various um, injuries for example you've had to sideways that's out of your control um and eventually if you get to a point where you need to hold some trades in order to cover for injuries down the track you know uh, you, you don't want to be fielding donuts so again that's another that's another call you have to make do i want to go for a luxury upgrade or do i want to at least leave one in reserve in the eventuality that I might get an injury. Because just because you finish upgrading your team and you get a full team doesn't mean the game's finished. Because we're, we're looking to finish our teams around the buys, which is halfway through the season. There's still another half of football to come. Of the, of, you know, right. so it's, right. it's, not, it's not done and dusted then and there. That's right. Do you look to try to get an extra one to two premiums on your yes. bench? Is that the way that you look to do it? You know, I, I know that... I had, it was Harry Himmelberg on the bench as that extra, well, so-called premium last year. But being able yep. to flip in with your Will Day types, your Sheasel types was really, really handy. So I think that's going to be another key this year to possibly try and get that extra premium. I know Spills last year had the choice between keeping onto the trade and then, or, or else going a little bit earlier. I think he had a little bit of money in the bank to upgrade a rookie to your Himmelberg type. He decided to upgrade and that worked okay for him. But for others, you know, they did that. Then a day cost goes down. And you think, ah, oh, damn, without getting this mediocre type premium, if I had to save that trade when day cost went down, I could have got basically the best of the best, anyone I wanted. So comes down to luck, comes down to a little bit of strategy. It's just the game that we love, boys. The game that we love. Absolutely. So much going on in Supercoach that, you know, just videos like this and, and sticking with us throughout the whole season. You know, various aspects and things that we do is really important. That's right. Exactly. All these, the, the, the um, what's it called? The, uh, the, the name, the name eludes me now, honestly. We've been recording so much and the heat's getting to my head. Stock all market, of the different yeah. resources, the, yeah. all, all, the, the stock markets, the predictions, all of these things, you got to keep up to date with all the time. Um, and of course, keeping track of all these changes because, you know, Harry Himmelberg, who you mentioned there, you know, he was playing forward and you wouldn't want to touch him with a 10-foot pole when he's playing as a forward. But as soon as you get a role change, yes, that break even might look high in the first instance. Mm. But once he plays in the back line and gives you a really decent score and that becomes part of his scoring cycle, all of a sudden the next break even is going to be substantially lower. So it's all about not right. you don't have to necessarily just play the break even game. It, it definitely helps to come to your content creators to keep an eye out on all of the the role changes that are happening because then you might be able to get ahead of the curve like some people got with Darcy Cameron uh, from Collingwood yeah. when he became this the became the primary ruck and he was in the forward line so people that pick up on these things even a Ben Keys I know a lot of people had him as an extra as an extra premium before he lost that midfield role he was well, also someone that you had him on field, Big J. Oh, no. <laughs> I struggled last year. I'll tell you. 
<laughs> yeah so that's where it comes down to you know um trying to be maybe it's it can be it can help to be ahead of the curve and keeping an eye on these things but at the same time if you're the first one there and it blows up in your face you're the only one so that's mm. why it's really important that you keep an eye out on your content creators and you keep an eye on you're doing your own research during the course of the season to pick up on all those factors that dr mentioned before before you really get onto a player absolutely and do you have any that, um do you have any parting words, DR? Like for, for people, maybe give us like a couple of rules that you stick by throughout the season. Maybe one, two, or three, kind of up to you how you're feeling of hey, these are the things that I try not to do, these are the things that I do takeaways from from your playing throughout the years. Yeah, look, I think first and foremost, do your research. Do your research and there's so many great content creators out there these days. I have heard arguments that you really try to limit it, not to confuse yourself, but I'm a little bit the opposite. Even myself as a creator, I don't just do my own videos. I literally tune into every video that I can because if I can get a little idea here and there, fantastic. That could make the difference between getting a really good player in my side from 50-50, maybe about two players. So research is a really, really big one. I think something I learned last year is that getting a balance between gut feel and the preseason games. So you look at someone like a Liam Jones last year, he really lit it up. We've got stars in our eyes and go beautiful. This guy's going to be a terrific selection. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. I look at my first team reveal last year, fellas, and this is when the team picker came open. And my original defence, my first three picked, were James Sicily, Nick Dacos, and Jordan Dawson. I ended up with uh, Doherty Ridley and somebody else. So <laughs> what happened there, it was looking at those preseason games. And the other thing, it was group talk and it was group think. Yeah. I wasn't quite keen on some of these plays, but I thought, well, hang on. This bloke's getting him. This guy's selecting him. Jeez, look at his ownership rise. I better jump on the train here. Even though I don't think it's right, I better just go with it. I would go with your gut. I would go with your gut. Look, if you're a beginner to the game, yeah, maybe look at ownership percentage, and that's going to give you a good idea about who's a popular pick. If you see someone at the 1% to the 5% mark, a lot of the time that's for a reason. Um, like yeah. True story, my wife was making her team the other day, and she helps them with the stock market and everything. But you wouldn't guess this pick in a million years who she had in the forward line. 300K, mate. Freer, mm. I'm just going to tell you because we'll be here for 10 minutes. Yo, Josh Tracy, Josh oh. Tracy, Tracy. Wow, uh, a real pod selection, mate. So, uh, I said to her, Look, Lise, uh, get onto the center bounce, uh, listen to Big J and uh, Joey, they'll sort you out here <laughs> because we don't want the Josh Tracy picks. Um, no. you know, go, go pod if you've got a good gut feel. Um, hmm. but at the end of the day, don't go too pottish. So that's another word of advice. Uh, another word of advice I suppose I have is I like vanilla with a cherry or a little bit of sprinkles on top. So vanilla, get your structure. Don't go too wacky. Don't go too different. Look at what other people are doing, but then put your own spin on it. Don't go too co cookie cutter. If you've got a nice pod that you like or a player that maybe isn't too popular, or maybe it could be a little bit of tinkering with a different structure compared to most other sides, then go for it. I think that's great. If you put your own little spin on things, then that's a really good thing as well. So, um, yeah, that's some pretty basic type advice. Um, but, yeah, don't get sucked into the preseason games. I'm not getting sucked in to one or two good performances. If I've had a bloke locked in who's had a really good season, a good history, I'm pretty confident about what his role is. I'm not going to panic if he has a bad game and even if they're a round zero player. If they don't perform overly well in round zero, but I still see it's a nice role, it looks just looks like they've had a down game for one reason or another, I'm not going to panic because they could be terrible trades. You know, when there's like 10 minutes to go in lockout, you're like, no, nah, bugger it, I'm going to do it. Just try Those to ease work. off it. Because, Those yeah, never work. Right, Joey, I it got burnt never so works. many times last year yeah. for doing that. Don't, don't do yeah. it, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. and last thing. Sorry, I'm probably babbling on now, right? But no. don't lock yourself into a plan because Joey's already mentioned this in Big J already. Don't say, all right, this round I'm bringing this player yeah. at this price. The projections say that in three or four weeks they're going to be priced here. 
it could be completely different. They could have a dip in form, absolutely go off tap, and all of a sudden you're like, shit, I can't get this player that I wanted. What am I going to do? So you need, in, in this game, plan A, B, C, D, E, F. If you can count the alphabet to Z, then even better because it can just change in a second, in, in a minute, in an hour, if a couple of players go down, if a players are laid out. Look what happened with LDU last year with all oh. that carnage, man. Like that was – I avoided it, right? So I'm not yeah. burnt, so I'm looking to start him this year. But for other people, <laughs> just damn, you know, it's – it's just shocking. So, uh, yeah, so I've probably babbled on there, guys, but uh, no. there's so many things, isn't there? I suppose what the lesson learned there is there's so many things that you need to take into account, and that's what you get with experience in, in playing the game. So if you're a beginner, you know, don't worry if you're not around the top 1% to 5%. If you're around the top 10% these days with the competition we've got, hey, pat yourself up on the back. If you're around the top 20% to 30%, hey, Pat yourself on the back. At the end of the game, at the end of the day, it's a fun game that we all love. We all have those years where we balloon out, things just don't mm -hmm. go right. But then we all have those years Joey talked about around the top hundred uh, not long ago. We have those years where everything just seems to click as well. So uh, for beginners, don't put too much pressure on yourself. I would just even for one to two years, learn the game, listen to yeah. people that know what they're talking about, tinker with a few different things. And work out what your personal style is because Joey's style is different to mine, which is different to Big J's. We'll agree on lots of things, but we'll certainly disagree respectfully and uh, in, with banter in a fun way on on other things as well. So, um, yeah, probably probably my bit of advice here, boys. And make sure you have fun too throughout the season. Hundred percent. Super can drive you mad. You can wake oh, up and, yeah. and think about it, go to bed thinking about it, complain at the TV. I mean, we all love to yell at the TV. Say, why are you not scoring more points? Don't give away free kicks. But in the end of the day, it's, it, it's a game, right? It's not real life. Yeah. So make sure you have exactly. fun. Thing, yeah. And we can hate Stewie Dew and, and other coaches for not picking Charlie <laughs> Constable, for example. <laughs> like, free Charlie Constable, <laughs> God damn it. Like, he's stuck <laughs> on the bubble. Play him. You know what I mean? Oh. Um, we were just waiting, just, weren't we? Waiting. What we're, this this could be the week. Now, next week he's he's getting 30 in the VFL. Like it's coming, it's coming. But the good thing there is we all suffered, didn't we? Like correct. it was like yes. no one didn't have him. <laughs> it's like we all had him. <laughs> it was like we were gold a little bit there from from previous we'll years if you've been around. Yeah, and yeah. I guess and I guess a final word is even if you start slow, even if you got a lot that you gotta fix up at the start of the season, because you might have been sucked in. And fair enough, I was sucked in last year in the preseason game. <laughs> PR was sucked great. in as well. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. You, you, anyone can get sucked in, but it's a long season and you can always trade your way back in. If you go and watch those stock market vids, if you go and look at other predictions and you do your, and you do your research, you can always trade your way back. DR and I were like around the 80K rank mark and we both finished in the top 2,000. So you can always... You can always work your way back from a slow start. It's it's all fun and games. And as soon as you don't find it fun, you're going to drop it. And if you drop it, you're going to regret it down the track, I feel. 100%, mate. Very well said. Couldn't have said it better, mate. All right, guys. Well, well, you've heard from DR. Let us know down in the comments what you think. We've got our Super Coach group as well. So make sure you jump on that. We spoke about that in our last episode. You can win three amazing prizes. DR's son kind of knows what's happening. So we've got our super coach jersey. We've got two tickets to the AFL. And then we've got an AFL voucher as well. I'll put the link down in the description below. Exactly. And thank you so much, DR, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, for those who have been living under a rock, have missed our videos, have missed his videos. I don't, I can't personally understand how that would happen. But if you haven't, you got to head on over to Super Coach with DR. <laughs> Get on there, subscribe to him, and you also got to keep a massive close, a very close eye on a certain podcast that you're working on that, that you've already been on, but you're taking to the next level, dear. Yes, thank you very much, mate. Look, it was, I'll tell you what, big shoes to fill. I was always going to say no. Coming after Jaden, it's like, oh, damn, I feel so <laughs> sorry for the poor bloke that's coming after Jaden because. That was that was just so next level, but uh, nah, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, we, we we do have some pretty exciting news 
about the Swordplay Potty. We are getting on Spotify this year. And within the next week, launching our own website as well with a bit of merch, which is a little bit of fun. We've teamed up with AFL Doodles, who is a legend of the Twitter X community. So make sure you follow him if you don't. But that's been a really fun project to do with him. And, uh, yeah, really looking to, to take it to the next level. And uh, another way that we're looking to take it to the next level is to invite some more regular guests on. And uh, the Olive Branch is absolutely extended. And there's an open invitation to you two legends to jump onto the poor, uh, Sword Plate podcast anytime this year. And, uh, yeah, I'll guarantee that we'll definitely have you on, as well as uh, featuring in the team previews, as we've mentioned before. So uh, it's always a pleasure, guys. Um, love being on this channel. Love you two blokes as humans. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much again for having me on. Always an absolute pleasure. Very humbled to be on here. Anytime, dear. Congrats on the 5K, mate. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. Looking for the next 5,000 to come. So, guys, make sure <laughs> you give us a sub, sub to DR, a sub uh, to everyone that you love and hold dear to your hearts because it's all about positivity here in the preseason. Make sure you hit the notification bell and everything because everyone is pumping out all the content like hotcakes here in this preseason because mm -hmm. every one of us does a lot of hard work, don't we, Big J? Yeah, and we do it so you guys don't have to. See you guys. Bye for now.